Welcome to Rotten Damians. Today we are discussing The Boogeyman Explained 2023. A few nights ago I was with some friends and we decided to watch The Boogeyman 2023. At first I was a little reserved and expected it to be a generic paranormal horror movie. However, I was pleasantly surprised. The Boogeyman 2023 is an adaptation of Stephen King's short story titled, can you guess it, The Boogeyman. This isn't the first time that this story has appeared in media. In 1982 it appeared as a short film and in 2005 it appeared as a long film and now in 2023 it has once again been reimagined as a long film. Admittedly I haven't seen any of the adaptations apart from the 2023 movie. However to my knowledge this is the first time that the boogeyman has fallen under the elevated horror subgenre. Elevated horror basically means that a movie uses horror elements to discuss very real and prevalent issues like depression or grief. The Babadook is probably the most notable movie in this subgenre. The Boogeyman 2023 discusses depression and grief, however it uses a monster-like figure lurking in the shadows to enhance this allegory and to keep it interesting. But we'll speak a little bit more about that later. The movie serves as a sequel to Stephen King's short story. Hence, it pretty much begins where the short story left off. Lester Billings, who was the protagonist in the short story, visits Will Harper, the father of our new protagonists. Will is a therapist and Lester has come to him seeking answers. He tells us that he keeps seeing an evil entity lurking in the shadows and that the same entity killed his children. So now he and his Sally Hardesty looking wife are being blamed for the murder. Will is obviously upset that Lester hasn't paid him yet and decides that he isn't protected under patient-client confidentiality. So he calls the cops to alert them of his whereabouts. While he is calling the cops we hear struggle in the Harper's recently deceased mother's art studio. We later see that Lester has offed himself in the studio or rather that the boogeyman has offed him. The boogeyman then latches itself to the Harpers. The boogeyman is almost like a depression where it feeds on trauma, so it mainly targets Sawyer and Sadie who are battling the grief of their mother. Long story short, Sadie and Sawyer attempt to fight the beast whilst their father is absent for majority of the movie. I think this potentially hints at his own grief. He withdraws. The boogeyman eventually attacks the family and Sadie sets it alight using her mother's lighter. Earlier in the movie, Sadie asked the ghost of her mother to point the flame to the left. Nothing happened back then, but now, before she sets the monster alight, the flame points to the left. This indicates how Sadie's grief has progressed. She seems to have reached a point of acceptance. She can now set her trauma and depression alight. It will no longer trouble her. Once the monster has been killed, we see the family at a group therapy session, showing how the grief and death of their mother or the haunting of the boogeyman has brought them closer together. As the family are leaving therapy, Sadie hears the therapist call her name from a dark room. Rather than entering the room, she decides to simply slam the door shut. Thankfully, as she does this, the therapist appears from a different room, telling us that it was in fact the boogeyman hiding in the dark room. This scene essentially tells us that the boogeyman is not dead and that it will always be around waiting to consume Sadie and her family, just as the grief and death of her mother will always be looming over her. No one can ever fully heal. However, she can accept the death and trauma by acknowledging its existence and not letting it consume her, which is exactly what Sadie does by slamming the door shut. All in all, I was pleasantly surprised by the film and respect director Rob Savage for his handy and creative camera work especially the scene where Sawyer is looking under her bed and the entire camera rotates to show her hanging upside down. It reminds me of Stranger Things where the camera literally flips upside down showing us a new world that the boogeyman has entered. I also enjoy that the creature looks more alien slash mythological rather than paranormal. I especially enjoyed that it could be set alight because that means on some level it is tangible and possesses organs and blood vessels. It kind of made me think about its origin, like is it a demon, an alien, or a long lost creature that nobody knew existed? It is a nice twist on the traditional paranormal entity. I'll give the movie 6 Rotten Damians out of 10. It had good cinematography, atmosphere and message, however the story was very simple, the scares were very generic of a traditional paranormal horror movie, and the protagonists made stupid decisions. 
if you can look past these shortcomings, it's a fun watch, so I do still recommend it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe so that you never miss an upload and so that you can show all your friends your cool horror knowledge. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.